folks. Welcome back to Bougie Comfort Food. I'm your hostess, Mary Landry, and today is New Year's Day. Now, we're going to do a little something different for New Year's. Everyone knows that eating cabbage and black-eyed peas is for luck during the New Year, so we're going to take a little twist on that today, and we're going to make cabbage rolls. Now, this is a German recipe for uh, cabbage rolls, and it's very similar to one that a childhood friend, her mom used to make them, and um, it comes out pretty well. I, I put a little extra seasoning to it because I found it a little bit bland, but uh, we're going to make cabbage rolls for you today for our luck and money to come in the new year, because who couldn't do without a little more money? All right, so... We're going to get started with this. Now, unfortunately, you have to prep a little bit ahead. You're going to need a Savoy cabbage, a green cabbage. And what you're going to do is you're going to put this in the freezer. Now, it needs to be in the freezer at least a couple of hours till it's solid. And then you're going to have to thaw it. Now, this is instead of taking the leaves off and boiling them and having to handle hot, hot leaves. So this is a different take on it than a lot of people are used to. The other thing that you have to do is make up two cups of rice in advance. And I've got mine here and it is cooling. And we're also going to saute two tablespoons of garlic, minced garlic. Y'all know I love my minced garlic. And we're gonna take that with two tablespoons of olive oil and put that in our skillet. And in addition to that, you need two medium onions, finely chopped. Now what I like to do is grate my onion. If you watched my twice baked potatoes, you'd know that. It just comes out a little finer and a little easier on the palate and you don't get big old chunks of onion. So we're gonna take our two onions and our minced garlic and put those into a skillet and slightly brown them. So, let's get that cranking. And while we're doing that, we're gonna talk to you about the other ingredients you need today. In addition to your two onions and your minced garlic, you're gonna need a pound of hamburger and a pound of ground sausage. Now this one is a pound and a half, but that's okay. We're, uh, we're just gonna take a little bit off the top and call it even. So, we're gonna brown up our onions and our garlic in our pan. Now, remember, if you grate your onions, you're gonna get a little finer cut on those onions. And that way you don't end up with big old chunks of onion inside of this. Basically, your stuffing for your cabbage rolls is kinda of like little mini meat loaves. So, just letting you know, that's the, the consistency you're going to end up with. And like I said, we have about a pound and a half of ground sausage, or excuse me, ground pork. So, we're going to put aside half a pound of that. And that will become part of our breakfast casserole in a couple of days. Who doesn't like breakfast casserole? I mean, come on. And... Uh, like I said, you, you only need a pound of ground pork. And like I said, this one came as a pound and a half, but that's no big worry. You could have added it in and just done more cabbage rolls, or you can set it aside like I'm fixing to do. And then in addition to that, you're going to need a pound of ground beef. So we're going to put our ground, por ground pork. And the reason I use ground pork in this is that it gives it a little extra flavor. Boy, nothing's working with my gloves today. That's okay. We're going to make it happen, Captain. A pound of ground beef in here. And I caught mine on sale at the big box club, so... It'll work out just fine. And we're getting those onions and that garlic up to a sweat right now. And we're gonna get them nice and browned, and then we're gonna put them off to the side so they cool a little bit before we throw them in here. 
Now, in addition to this ground pork and ground beef, you'll need three large eggs. You're going to need two tablespoons of Mrs. Dash. And for the covering for this, we're going to put in, um, it's going to have tomato soup, two cans of tomato soup, and you do not add water to those, a can of chicken broth, and two cans of V8. Now that's V8s or those little V8s. You need two cans of them. Now I have low sodium ones, but you can use the regular ones. That's fine. Alrighty, let's get that two tablespoons of Mrs. Dash in here. That's just to give you a little extra flavor, a little extra seasoning on those. Like I said, cabbage rolls can be bland, and nobody likes bland food. Come on now. Everybody says, well, why don't you just add some Tony Sasheries? You could. You could just, just as easily add Tony Sasheries to this and it would turn out just fine. Give you a little bit of red pepper spice to it, but I'm gonna go more traditional, so we're not gonna amp up that spice too much. We're just gonna brown this onions and garlic in this pan. And like I said, it's quite a bit, but that's okay, that gives us more flavor in there. Alrighty, let's keep percolating. We're gonna throw in our three eggs now. And I don't know about you, I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas or solstice or whatever it is that you, you uh, enjoy. And I'll tell you, our Christmas was 84 degrees. 84! Whew! Texas. Gotta love it, right? Okay. So, at this point, we've got cooked rice. And we need two cups of it. And I made a little too much rice, but that's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. Now you could refrigerate your rice. You can make it ahead of time and refrigerate it overnight and cool it down. That's fine. Um, like I said, you're going to want to have your cabbage frozen so that it thaws in time to do this. And, you know, like I said, it may seem a little strange, but trust me, that cabbage is, uh, it's easier than peeling them off and boiling those leaves. So we do it as a frozen cabbage. Let's set these off to the side because we're not quite ready for them yet. And our onions are starting to really smell like onion in this joint. Now look, if you choose to boil your cabbage, you can do it that way. You'll just cut into that stalk and peel them off. But I'm gonna tell you, your house is gonna smell like boiled cabbage. And that may not be the scent that you wanna give off during the holidays. So, um, I had somebody describe it as old people in despair. So, you know, but if you like the smell of boiled cabbage, more power to you. You're a stronger-willed person than I am. Alrighty, we're just going to get those onions and garlic going. Keep it percolating. And I'm going to grab a sip of my water real fast. Now we like these cabbage rolls. These are something that we enjoy. My wife has never had these, so this is gonna be her first experience. Now I will tell you, when you serve these cabbage rolls, you're gonna serve these with sour cream. And today we're gonna to make um, cheesy garlic mashed potatoes to go alongside them and of course our black eyed peas. Cause we want that luck and money in the new year. So we're just getting those onions sweated out and get them nice and browned so we can throw them in here. And you might be thinking, ooh, that's a lot of onion. Well, that is the predominant flavor in here is onion and cabbage. 
That is a German thing. So, so far we've got our rice in here, we've got our ground beef, our ground pork, and we've got three eggs and our Mrs. Dash. And we are just going to keep everything percolating along and make sure that everybody knows what's going on. Now, you may have different um, New Year's traditions in your family, and that's fine. Some people eat corned beef and cabbage for New Year's. It just really depends on how you were raised. My family never did anything special for New Year's. Um, I guess my mother was pooped out after making Christmas, but that's okay too. Now I'm just trying to mix in this rice a little bit, mix in the seasoning so it doesn't pool at the bottom in our eggs. Now those eggs are in there as a binder, just like you do with meatloaf. And like I said, we are going to put these onions and garlic into here. I can tell you the dog got excited when I started pulling out meat. She thought she was excited for the onions until it hit her nose, and then she wasn't so excited anymore. Everybody remembers our friend Fred and the cat and Abby the dog. Abby's over there on the couch listening to me. She hears me say her name, and it's thump, thump, thump on the couch. We'll have to show you Fred the cat at some point. He's over there with his person at the moment which is uh, my roommate, Randy. That is his person. He loves his Randy and he loves to sit on him. All right. Those onions are starting to come around. Starting to come around. And like I said, we're gonna kind of brown the onions and garlic. So don't be afraid if it starts getting a little brown in there, that's what it's supposed to do. We put it with two tablespoons of olive oil. Now, I'll tell you, you need cooking spray for this recipe to spray your pan. And since olive oil is already being used in the recipe, I like to use olive oil cooking spray. So, we like to try to keep a, a little bit of a continuity going with it. Like I said, we get it nice and browned in the skillet. Y'all all know I like using my grandma's skillet. Most people get handed down a cast iron. I didn't, but that's okay. I still like it. And uh, my Aunt Paula says she watches our videos every week. And uh, she was down here when we made uh, meatloaf and made for Thanksgiving. So she said she enjoyed those quite a bit. She's a meatloaf kind of girl, so. And who doesn't like a good meatloaf? I mean, really. All right, so we're going to set those off to the side so they can cool down a little bit before we throw them in here. And we're going to start showing you what to do with that cabbage. So give me just a minute. Let's get set up with that. And get another sip of my water here. Woo! It's a hot one here in Texas today, I tell you. All right. So, here comes the big part of why you're going to freeze that cabbage. Now, a lot of you might be saying, ugh, freezing it, ugh. And it's got a weird texture now. Well, that weird texture is a lot easier to work with than a raw cabbage. So, when you take it out of the freezer and let it thaw, it's gonna look kind of pathetic. You can see mine flattened where it was sitting. Now the first thing you're gonna do is peel off those first couple of leaves because they're gonna to be tough. Those are those tough outer leaves and you don't wanna eat those anyway. So we're gonna peel those off nice and gentle. I don't wanna bruise her up too bad. All right. You see how soft they became. Now, if you've picked up that cabbage in the store, you know that sucker is not soft. There is no part of soft in the word cabbage. Trust me. So, we're going to gently peel off the next layer. And you can see me coming off of getting it real gentle. They kind of stick to each other like wet paper. Okay. We're going to come down that cabbage 
and just peel it off. Now, you're gonna have a lot of drip because cabbages are a lot of water. And you wanna to try to make sure your leaves look fairly decent. You can see they're slightly translucent. You can see the color and they do get lighter the, the more into it you go. But you're gonna kinda of lay that leaf out on your cutting board and you're gonna take it. Now down by the stalk is a heavy end. Now what we wanna do is just cut that end right out of there because it's tough and it's hard to eat. We're just gonna slice right through it and take that little piece out of there. You can see it's much thicker. That vein is really heavy and that's not gonna make it easy. So now that we've done that, you end up with a piece that looks like this, kind of angel winged. Now when we get ready to stuff them, and we still gotta put our onions and garlic in this, but when we get ready to stuff them, what you're gonna do is take those two loose ends and kind of fold them over each other, okay? So that way you have a nice solid surface to work with. Okay, let's go ahead and get our onions and garlic. Add it into our bowl. Now it's gonna be hot, so we're just gonna to try to spread it out loosely so it cools a little better before we get too busy mixing it in. We're not trying to cook the meat ahead of time. Okay. All right, and let's set that skillet off to the side. Okay, folks, so we've got our onions and garlic cooled down enough to handle them. Now, the big part about this is you do have to get in here and mix all this by hand. Trust me, it makes it a more cohesive mixture if you do so. You've got your rice, you've got your onions, your garlic, your meat, your Mrs. Dash in here. And you can add salt and pepper to this if you so choose, although the Mrs. Dash does have pepper in it. And you can add a little salt if you want, but trust me, that chicken broth and the uh, tomato soup and everything has a lot of salt in it. So I don't think you really need extra salt. And you can always salt them when they come out if you choose. And you're gonna serve these, once you're done cooking these, you're gonna serve these with sour cream on top, which I just think is fantastic. You can add cheese to it if you choose to. You know, it's really your personal taste, but for the meat mixture, it's just very simple. It's kind of like a meatloaf mixture. All right, we've got that nice and mixed. Now what you're gonna do is take about a half a cup of meat, and I try to form it a little bit into a little shape, okay? We're gonna lay that down in our cabbage, and we're gonna take that in. Remember, we folded two ends over each other. You're gonna take them and just kind of roll it up nice and easy. And you'll see, you've got extra at the sides. See, we pulled them out loose. We're just gonna fold those over the folded side and lay these, whoops. I gotta spray my pan real quick. See, I knew I was forgetting a step. That's okay. Easy peasy. We're gonna take our pan and I'm gonna take it and spray it. Now remember, we put olive oil into our onions and garlic, so I like to continue that by spraying my pan with olive oil pan. You wanna get a good layer down in there so they don't stick, because these will stick to the bottom if you're not careful. Okay. Nice layer of olive oil pan, and you're just going to lay those cabbage rolls in there, and you're going to continue taking your cabbage. Remember, we're just peeling off layers. You just gently peel those leaves away because since they've been frozen, they're a lot easier to work with, but they're a lot more easier to tear. And trust me, this is the easier way than boiling them. I have tried doing them both ways. This is the best method. So, we take another leaf off of our cabbage. 
We lay it out nice and pretty. Cut that stem end out of it. Because remember, that's not good eating. I'm just going to cut it out in a triangular wedge. Because that part is really tough and you don't want that in there. Okay. Lay our cabbage relief out. Fold our two ends over each other so that we have a nice bed to put them in. About a half a cup of meat mixture. Form it into a little roll. Put it right in the middle. Take those two ends. Fold them up over it. Roll her up. See how easy that is? You see my leaf is not cooperating with me, but that's okay. Roll it right on up. Fold those two ends over that folded over end and lay them in our pan. Now we're gonna continue rolling these and come back to you in just a minute with a pan full and we'll show you how to make your, uh, how to make your covering for it. Now remember, that's gonna be the tomato soup, the V8 and the chicken broth. So we'll be back to you in just a minute. Y'all hang tight now. Okay, folks, so we've got all our cabbage rolled up and now it is time to make our sauce. Now that sauce is two cans of tomato soup. And do not add water to it. A can of chicken broth. And two cans of V8. Now, if you can find it in the bottle and you'd rather buy that one, that's fine. Just know that these are five and a half ounces, so you'd need 11 ounces of V8. Make sure you shake them up real good. Because you want to make sure anything that's settled in the bottom gets handled. And no, it is not carbonated. It's just the sound it makes when you open it. All righty. So, we've got our chicken broth, our tomato soup, and our V8. And we're just going to give it a little light whisk in a bowl. Get it all stirred up. And see, that smells really good. You're going to know the smell of cabbage by the time this is all over with, trust me. But, my wife says she loves cabbage. And she says even if she tries this and doesn't like it, she's going to just unwrap them and eat the meat because I put ground pork and ground beef and a lot of onion and garlic, so it's gonna be good stuff. Now, you wanna make sure that they're kinda of level, so I just kinda of press them with my hand and make sure they're all good. And then you just take that liquid and gently pour it all over it. And I think I needed a bigger pan for all that. But that's okay. Just hang tight. Well, shoot, we needed a bigger pan. So as you can see, my 13 by nine is a little small, although I think this is not a 13 by nine, but an 11 by, um, maybe it's a, a 12 by eight, but that's okay. We're gonna shift them into a bigger pan and we'll be right back with you. Okay, so now we switched them over to an 11 by 15 because I had a ton of cabbage rolls. So we're gonna pour our tomato juice cocktail that we have made up with the tomato soup and the V8 and the chicken broth over the tops of them. Now we did grease this one just like we did the other one because we do not want them to stick. And you can see that 11 by 15 was a much better call than that uh, eight and a half by 13. So we're gonna put these into a 325 degree oven for two hours and we are gonna be ready to rock and roll. All right, folks, we'll be back to you in two hours and show you what it looks like. Hang tight. Two hours later. Okay, folks, we're back. So it's been two hours at 325 now remember, you're gonna to wanna to put foil over this before you put it in the oven. I don't know if I remembered to uh, tell you that beforehand, but here's the other thing to know. 
do not put it in your fridge with foil on it. The acid in this cooking will eat through that foil and will leave it on your cabbage rolls and that is not good eating. All right, ready for the big unveil? Here we go. Ooh, they smell so good. Look at those cabbage rolls. Mm. So, when you go to serve these, you're gonna wanna make sure you get some of that tomato sauce, that tomato gravy onto them, and you're gonna place them on a plate. And traditionally, they're served with sour cream. Now, if you're not big on sour cream, that's okay. Um, it's not that big of a deal. Um, just know that that's how they're traditionally served. And remember, we've put pork and beef in these. And my wife was like, whoa, those smell so good, I'm hungry. So I'm fixing to make some cheesy garlic mashed potatoes to go with these. That's a super easy recipe, and I'm just going to tell you how to do it. You're going to make your mashed potatoes like you normally would, and you're going to add into it, while they're still potato flakes, when you put those in, put two tablespoons of garlic powder, and you're going to put um, about a cup to two cups of uh, shredded cheese into them and mix all that up with your liquid ingredients and the heat of that hot water is gonna help melt that cheese and oh, they're so yummy. So from all of my family to all of you, I hope you have a blessed new year, a great rest of your evening and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Don't forget, if you've enjoyed this recipe, to subscribe, give us a like, and if you hit that notification bell, that will let you know every time we upload a new video. And so from myself, Mary Landry, and from Fred the Cat, and Abigail the Dog, we wish you a happy new year. Y'all have a blessed one. Bye now.